Hello and welcome back to the Sideline Eye podcast. We're back for our review show and we're looking at Armagh's draw with Monaghan from Saturday night. Again, this podcast is brought to you in association with McKeever's team. We're proud suppliers of all Armagh GA merchandise. And as always, the link to the McKeever website is in the podcast description. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by Aaron Kieran again and he's going to help us look back on the draw from Saturday night. And Aaron, this, this weekend actually had the potential to be um, my busiest weekend in terms of the podcast with so many games. There was Camogie game, the under-20 game, the ladies game, and nothing went ahead apart from the Arma footballers game. And yet, with only one game, it could still be my busiest podcast. There's so much to discuss and, and to break down, but there's only one place to start, and that's that's the penalty. Um, obviously, at the time, probably difficult enough to tell for anybody in the ground, unless you were behind the goals and had a good view of it. But certainly from social media and from Twitter videos, there's no doubt like the, the ball's Brian O'Neill's penalty, the ball's behind the line. Absolutely. I was uh, behind the Dalton goal, so I couldn't have been any further away from it. So I, I didn't know any different. Um but yeah, like it's it's very clear. Um I know it's it's fan footage or it's mobile phones, but from both the, the main stand and then the covered terrace, uh there's clear footage that shows the ball hits the grass. Um, and, and there is a bit of an arc uh, of muck within the goal mouth uh, behind where the goalkeeper is. So, yeah, there's no doubt about it. Uh, it was absolutely a goal. Uh, very, very poor mistake by both the umpire and Barry Cassidy that they didn't spot it. Um, number one, I, I know there's a lot of talk goes on between umpires and referees and that there. Um, and I'd have to give them a bit of credit here in terms of I didn't realise how much chat they, they do have. I, I seen it was the Armagh from Annie Game across a couple of years ago. It was Sean Hurston and his umpires and depending on what side of field the ball's on, like they're talking to each other as in the umpires are shouting back and forth to each other. I'm on, I'm switched on this time. You're on the back post and the ball switches wings. They'll chat to each other. So I wasn't aware that that happened, which was very good. Uh, but to me, it looked like they had organised how they look at a penalty. So Barry Cassidy, one of them was going to look at the goalkeeper. One of them was looking at the lane. And then the other one goes behind the goal to keep an eye on it in case it goes wide over the bar or whatever. And none of them did their job. So uh, I just think it was, a, it was a terrible error on their behalf um, that they didn't spot it. Um, clearly, one of them was supposed to be keeping an eye on, on the ball crossing the lane and they didn't do their job. Um, but in fairness to, to our my boys, they didn't let it get to them. Uh, we still continued to go after them, still continued to press them and, and made the most of uh, while they were down to 13 players. But yeah, in terms of a, of a poor referee and call, it's one that they would definitely have to hold their hands up and admit that they got it wrong. Yeah, I think I think that's the main thing. Like, Arma would feel aggrieved that they didn't get uh, awarded the goal when it had clearly crossed the line. But the position, and you can see the still from the, the video, the position of Barry Cassidy and particularly the umpire stand beside the post and as you say, what are they looking at then? If if that's if they're not doing their jobs, what what did they see or what what they didn't see basically? Yeah, well, like it, it, one of them is one of them supposed to be looking at the goalkeeper to make sure he doesn't come off his lane because he does come off his lane, so that's a mistake. Then the other one's supposed to be looking at the lane to see if the ball crosses it. They didn't see it. That's a mistake. And then you could throw in the third guy who's standing behind the goals, and again, his job is to see that the ball went to the net. It doesn't go over the bar, doesn't go wide or whatever. But surely he had to be looking at where the ball bounces. He was literally two foot away from it. Again, he doesn't do his job. Um, I've heard people say, you know, VAR and video analysis all that. To me, the men should be well capable of making the right call. Uh, granted, it is split seconds. It happens very quickly. But they're standing staring at it. It's their job to call it, you know, and they didn't do it. Um, so, yeah, like I said, just, just for me, the referee an error um, and it's one that it's probably it shouldn't be happening not at that level not whenever you're supposed to be as tuned in and as switched on um, and as organised as they seemed like they were before the penalty was taken for them to get it wrong it's it was disappointing from an Arab perspective and to make matters worse maybe um, Barry Cassidy's down for the Mayo game this Sunday I think so our mod fan, fans will be delighted about that well, maybe we might just say very little here because I think the more we would talk or the more we'd give out, uh, the more the players might be cursing us come Sunday evening. Um, we'll not we'll not spend too much time on the referee, but um, it it was just I, I suppose it was annoying seeing the the footage that it was so far behind the line. It reminded me of that. I think it was Robbie Keane against United one time, and Rob Carroll was the keeper, and he he was sprinting back to try to get it, and it was 
you know, five foot over the line and the, the referee didn't give it. It was something like that. But um, I suppose you, you said Armagh reacted well. They eventually got their goal maybe two minutes later. Um, and that, that was during the stage. There was a big turning point at that stage. McMahon, there's so much to talk about, as I said at the start. We'll start with the McManus red card. Um, Monaghan probably hit with a double whammy at that stage. Michael Bonnegan was through on goal, hits the post. And 10 seconds later, McManus is, is getting a red card. We we did, I did see a, um, a replay of it. And Conor McManus punches Aidan Falker. That's the, the long and the short of it. Um, probably unprovoked from what I've seen. And as strange from somebody of the experience of, of Conor McManus. Um, but it definitely helped Armagh's cause when he when he was off the field. Absolutely. And like I said, I was behind the Dalton goals. Um, I had a clear view of it. Uh, Conor McManus is as good a footballer as we're probably ever going to see. As nice a fella as you ever see. Not a dirty player at all. But for whatever reason, he did strike out. Um, and there's no doubt about it. I've seen plenty of chat online. And again, what they commented on last night in the Sunday game. They actually were passing comments on something that they couldn't see. They tried to make out that Aidan Falker had done more than what he'd done. He literally put one hand in the net and the other hand, as he swings around, he might touch Conor McManus, but it's not a punch. It's not enforceful. Uh, for whatever reason, Conor strikes out. So I just don't understand last night whenever they had no evidence to prove that he didn't strike. Well, what are they trying to insinuate that Aidan's gone down um, without, you know, being touched at all? Um, like I say, it's totally out of character for Conor McManus. No doubt about that there. But 100%, it was the straight red card. He struck, he threw a punch in the gut of Aidan um, whenever he wasn't expecting it. And I think he knew himself straight away he was in trouble. Um, he, he, you know, he, he didn't even really argue about it. He just took his medicine and walked off the field. But yeah, as far as I'm concerned, again, simply... If you don't see something and you have a conclusive evidence to give me an alternative view on it, well, then don't say anything at all. And while they spoke about it in Sunday game last night, they had nothing to show us any different um, in terms of should there have been a red card or what actually did happen, something more conclusive. Um, so for me, I'd be disappointed that they just passed comments on something that they, they couldn't prove otherwise. Yeah, I think we could do a nearly a whole show on how the Sunday game talked about the game. Um, last week against Tyrone, or two weeks ago, sorry, they were happy enough to show fan footage of what happened with the row, but there was no fan footage last night when they were talking about the penalty. Um, Pots belong. I, sorry, on, on down, I, I couldn't believe that because they did use the fan footage last week right behind the goals to show that the ball crossed the lane. And then there was angles from both uh, sides of the field, like we mentioned, that chose the ball going across the lane and they couldn't be bothered to use that there. So similarly, same thing. If you're going to go down a road where at some stage a mobile phone is good enough for you to put on a national broadcaster, well then just don't pick and choose your moments for it. I think we could definitely do a whole show on the Sunday game. As you as you say, the clip they showed trying to justify Connor McManus that, you know, he, he didn't do nothing to deserve a red card. I don't think McManus was hardly in the clip. You couldn't see it was more, there were more pots below on certainly was trying to insinuate Aidan Falker, as you said, swung his arm up, which was ridiculous. And anybody at the game and seeing what had happened, Aidan Falker had no part to play in it, bar, um, bar the, uh, the injured party. But yeah, we said about McManus that it was a massive turning point for Conor McManus going off. He had scored four points before that. And it was strange for him to react like that. Like Monaghan were well on top at that stage. They, they looked like the team that were going to win the game. Um, and him going off, and then Desi Ward, he got a, a black card for the penalty, and that sort of kick-started Armagh's best period. They scored 1-3 while he was off the field and got back into the game, basically. They did, and uh, while Monaghan will maybe feel aggrieved, um, or they seem like they've, they've been feeling slightly aggrieved this past few days over it, um, we can't really, really deal with that. And like I said, what Conor Dunn was out of character for him, but it, it was the correct decision. The black card, is it a black card? It probably was harsh enough. Um, if, if the shoe wasn't out of foot, it's definitely a penalty, I have no doubt about it, but I'm, I, I felt it was maybe more just a desperate last-ditch tackle um, I'm not sure that it was a clear and deliberate drag down. Um, we'll not complain about it, but if it did happen to us, I'm sure we would probably feel uh, that wee bit uh, more hard done by. 
uh, they got a bit of luck then in that the, the goal wasn't given whenever it clearly should have been. Um, but from an RMR perspective, uh, I, I think it was very positive how we went after them at that stage. Um, we got a, a real high press in them on a number of occasions. Um, but the big thing for me was once we won possession over uh, and we got turnovers over them, we were getting scores. And I think that was the big difference between the two teams where uh, there were a number of teams in the first half in particular, whenever they had one air kickouts cleanly and were breaking towards air goal. Um, air scramble defence was quite good, um, but their use of possession and the areas they sort of made their way into uh, was very poor. Uh, Some teams didn't even get shots off. So from our perspective, for us to be able to, to get one three in that time and really capitalise on the numerical advantage was something that was was definitely very, very positive. Where We really went after them at that stage and we made the most of it. And obviously having two men up was a, a huge advantage at that stage. But um, we'll talk about the subs bench as well and the impact of the subs. Um, Connor Herbert come on for Rain O'Neill. And Rain looked to be injured at that stage, but obviously come back on. I think it was actually a blood sub. Um, Rain had cut his leg and anybody had seen him bandaged up, it was um, because he was bleeding rather than he, he had got an injury. So um, yeah, Connor Herbert had come on. Got the goal, got a point in the first half. Oshin O'Neill, great to see Oshin back. Kept a super point and um, Supi Campbell as well. So once again, Armagh showing their, their strength and depth and their strength off the bench. And that, that was um, really apparent during that 10 minutes as well. Armagh scored 1-3 and 1-2 came from the subs bench. Yeah, and again, I think that's another huge positive that has come out of the season so far in terms of their definitely is strength, strength and depth there. Um, it's probably been a while since you've been looking at the Armagh subs bench and you could genuinely say hand and heart that we have by sitting on that bench that we'll be getting on the vast majority of other teams in the country. They'll be getting on Division 1 teams, uh, let alone your Division 2, 3 and 4 outfits. Um, so th- that's obviously a huge plus, a huge positive because uh, having quality players like that there um, to call on to make an impact uh, they're not used to sitting on the bench I'm very certain that they're not happy sitting on the bench but that's the position they find themselves at the moment and whenever they come on Kieran and the management team are getting the right reaction out of them um, but then what that does then is it filters into training during the week um, or whatever bit of A, a-, a-, a versus B games that they, they get to play um, similarly you will see them being every bit as competitive uh, where you have those guys trying to make sure they're getting off the B team uh, and pushing the way into the starting team. So uh, all around, it's it's hugely positive to see that there. And then, like we we have we were still blessed with serious quality in the bench who didn't get game time in the likes of your Kieran O'Han and Andrew Mornan and um, James Morgan. You know, vastly experienced players and and quality players at that, and they didn't even get minutes. Um, similarly, there's plenty of other boys who are going really well uh, in club football last year, and they're not even making the 26. So all in all, that's a that's a big positive and something that um, is is only going to stand to the team as as the season progresses. And Arma, I, I don't think it's unfair to say that that was their worst performance probably of the year. Um, obviously weather conditions, like as I said at the start, there was loads of games called off at the weekend. Um, for play the athletic grounds, it, it was playable and um, the surface was very good on Saturday night. Um, so you, you can read in the weather conditions, of course, it, it didn't help. But Armad just, they were below par, Arne. Um, stuff we haven't seen, unforced errors, sloppy on the ball, wrong decisions. Um, probably stuff we, we haven't seen in the first two games. And maybe coming in as favourites to this one. Um, it's a different mentality coming into the game as favourites than it was underdogs against Dublin and uh, Tyrone. But was there a case maybe that the hype had got to Armagh and some of the players that we spoke about at the last day about um, being in the changing room when you're 10 points up on how it's, it's hard to go out and keep that level of intensity when, when you're so far in front. Is it difficult to stay away from the hype when we were talking the last day? I was certainly talking about getting excited. Is it difficult for the players to keep away from that and, and not to buy into that? Uh, hand on heart as a player it is uh, it is difficult um, because and particularly you have to remember where we're coming from so no matter how much Gazer and the management team talk about next game staying focused in the processes uh, what got us to the situation they have such limited time with the players you know in terms of 
hand on hands on where they see them where they're getting the feed into into their brains uh, exactly what they want from them and then you have to factor in how long it's been since we were in division one competitive in division one beating all ireland champions beating dublin it's whatever it is it's maybe 14 15 years so the hype and the excitement around the county it was always going to be like this um and it is difficult for players because they're all walking like they're not professionals they're not stuck in their own wee bubbles where they don't meet the general public these boys are talking to their club mates and um, they're walking around their own towns and villages they're in their workplaces and and rightly so there, there's huge plaudits and plenty of positivity uh, around the group but it does um it does seep in a wee bit um, and I, I probably felt it wasn't until the second half. Monaghan body language and Monaghan's attitude in the first half, if you had to change jerseys, it looked to me exactly the like way I was against Tyrone. Um, they were just being, they were very physical, they were being narky, um, they were, you know, there was no space or time for, for the Arma boys. Um, they were all, we were always under pressure. Um, and that was just a role reversal of what the Tyrone game was. But from a well, the management will be delighted with it, uh, and also from a player in perspective, the super thing about the league is they're coming thick and fast. Your games are coming thick and fast. Um, in terms of what actual trends I do this week, probably very little. Uh, mostly recovery analysis and what went right, what went wrong. Um, and then the great thing is you get a chance to go out and, and rectify any issues or something that were wrong this week. But management will be delighted with it because you know, regardless of what they would have said after the two games, maybe it didn't seep in fully. It'll fairly seep in this week. Um, and the player in perspective, they've only another whatever it is five days at this stage that. Uh, to wait until they get the opportunity to go out and rectify any issues. So um, I, I would look at that from from a positive. It's a lesson learned and it wasn't massively costly for us. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. It was probably what Armand needed, a real dog fight against Monaghan, question marks over them, leading or trailing at half time, um, you know, having to produce it in the second half when, you know, they were so far front in front at half time against Dublin and Throne. This time they were four points down, they were getting outplayed. And as you say, they weren't getting the space. And I want to talk about the, the Armagh kickouts. Monaghan, they were so physical, I felt, on the Armagh kickouts. And rightly so. Um, Armagh's tactic has been highlighted the last couple of weeks that, you know, the bunch and break in the middle of the field. Monaghan just held on till the likes of Tiernan Kelly got a yellow card for wrestling. Rory Grugan, I think, was involved a bit as well. Armagh were trying to break away for the their own kickouts. And Monaghan just held them. The double mark, Rain O'Neill, so that long option wasn't on. So you can understand our man might be a bit frustrated, but they're going to have to get used to this. Mayo will have seen how well that worked for Monaghan, and we're going to see it probably again on Sunday. Yeah, that, that's welcome to, to life in Division 1. And I think, again, just another wee bit of analysis that hasn't been commented at all is there's no talk about Monaghan. Monaghan are a very good team. Um, they, they've been in Division 1 for years. Um, you know, they have two Ulster titles in the not-too-distant past. They lost in Ulster final last year by a point. Um, so they are, they're a quality outfit. Um, they're very dogged. They maximise everything that they have. Um, and again, that's maybe something that has just been glossed over and it's nearly, it's a massive disappointment. Oh, we can't beat the likes of Monaghan. Um, where Monaghan have been this past 10 years, uh, it's a, a much better place than where we've been. And the trajectory has been way ahead of us for a long period of time. So for me, you're right. Uh, in terms of they put a massive squeeze in us, I, I think they, they gifted us in positions that they wanted the ball to go to from, from kickouts uh, and then they were able to press and squeeze us um, straight after that there. Rory Began played a massive role in it and um, particularly in the second half he said he left his goal and the Dalton goal and he was down organising everyone making sure people were in the position they were supposed to be in but again that, that's a massive learning curve for us it didn't cost us we didn't lose a game um, we were able to, to see our way through it but it is something that we definitely have to learn on for this week because with, with all due respect to Monaghan, we're going actually up another level now this weekend and we're going up against a team who love the press, love to tackle high up the field. Um, so it's something that we're really going to have to get the grips on. Probably have to go and make a few tweaks in it this week um, because it's definitely a key area of improvement for us. Um, but it doesn't take me or you or, or any of us sitting at home or standing watching the game uh, to have to go and tell the management that. They'll be well aware of it and I have no doubt they'll be trying to put plans in place of how they can make tweaks uh, that we get improvements and we can get the ball away a bit easier this week. And Monaghan, 
particularly in the first half, were by far the better team. And just their shooting efficiency really let them down. I think they had 10 wides in the first half and 16 in total. So Armagh maybe count themselves lucky they were still in the game at half time um, before being able to, to bottle back and get a draw. Yeah, like you know, there's no point in us running around with just our arm hat on here and and not looking at what the reality of it was. And that's correct. Like it, it did look at times where uh, they were missing two or three in a row, and it's sort of you could hear sort of nearly a few groans from their supporters, um, and maybe a few sighs of release from ourselves because it is a game that could have ran away from us, but it but it didn't. Um, and then whenever the opportunity presented itself for us to to get back into it and to punish them, we did. Um, but uh, yeah, for, from a money perspective, I would say that's probably something that has become a bit of a trend for them this year, where, where they are very wasteful. Um, now, some of them was because we were putting them into areas and putting them under pressure in terms of their shot selection. But there were there were other times where they did get good clear breaks on us. Um, we looked like we were scrambling and we were under pressure and they just didn't execute. Um, but that's that's not for us to worry about. Uh, we leave that to Banty and his management team um, to, to come to terms with that one. But in terms of us, yeah, at half time, uh, I, I would have felt we definitely we were lucky um, to be as close as what we were. Uh, but... It, it didn't really matter. The boys seemed to regroup um, and they were able to stay focused. And I remember it was just a, it was a conversation with one of the, the cross lads after the Ironman Monaghan game last year. I was saying in the championship, like, Jesus, it must have been hairy enough at half time um, in terms of management not being happy, but they said, no, we were, we were very calm, very focused and composed. We knew exactly what went wrong and how we were going to go about changing it. Um, and again, same thing this weekend. And that's, I suppose, a, a good genuine sign of growing confidence and self-belief within the squad um, that they're able, able and still capable of doing that. I think we're seeing... A massive learning from what happened last year when the game was in the melting pot and I think our it was level and Monaghan got two frees. Um, Conor McManus, I think, won, won or bought both of them, um, whatever way you want to put it. But um, while he wasn't on the field on Saturday night, you could tell Monaghan were really trying to get the ball to Jack McCarron, like he's their, he's their clutch player, he's their go-to player. And Armagh were so disciplined defensively, they weren't going to give away any silly frees. They weren't going to uh, give away any scoring opportunities on it. at the end. Then Barry Cassidy just blew the whistle because it was just going to be keep ball for a couple of minutes, basically, until Monaghan tried, tried to work that score. Yeah, again, that, that was definitely that, that was a noticeable improvement. Um, there was no rash tackles, no one diving in. And even the free that they did get uh, in, in real time, I thought it was very harsh. And watching the back last night and um, Sunday game, I still feel the same. Uh, I think he knew what he was doing. He tried to go down the first time. Uh, to see if he could get a free and second time, uh, I thought it was a soft free. Um, I don't think we we I don't think we're uh, being blinkered uh, and feeling annoyed over it. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, just what happened then after that there, where they kept possession, kept trying to probe. There was only one person who was ever going to shoot from play, and that was McCarran. Uh, and he was well tracked, well marshaled. Uh, the, every time he, he tried to make a, a break um, and they had a lot of very incisive runners where they're trying to cut in off the wing at pace all the time uh, and they were tracked all the time and uh, it was just hands on there was no foul and we were able to turn them back and put them back towards the wing again um, so yeah that that was definitely it's a it's huge imp- improvement and something that you can be fairly certain just didn't happen with chance that it, it would have been clearly worked on uh, after last year's game and we'll, we'll end on a positive as well, Arn. Um, while Armagh maybe needed this to keep their feet on the ground and they didn't have their best performance, they joined top of the league, they're unbeaten in Division 1. Um, it's it's still a good time to be an Armagh fan and certainly leading in until um, Sunday's game. This is a, a crunch a crunch game with Mayo there in five points as well. Um, it's a lot to look forward to, I suppose, this coming Sunday. It is, isn't it? Brilliant to have the opportunity to be going to play a team of the calibre of Mayo. They're after being in, in two All Ireland finals as well. Um, teams stacked with absolute household names. So what an opportunity for for the Armagh boys again to go and pit themselves against the best, uh, and for all the rest of us to to get on the road and go and follow them. Um, you know, if you had said. Uh, whatever it was a month ago uh, that we'd be sitting at this stage still unbeaten um, and maybe cribbing and crying a wee bit over a draw uh, having had two wins previous well you definitely would have took it 
Um, in terms of where where the playing group are at, you know, again a month ago, did we see ourselves as you know been talked up as highly as what we are, um, or see ourselves as advanced as where we are? We probably didn't. Um, but you know, now is not a time to start taking a step back. Uh, it's it's a time to keep building and keep trying to improve as a group. And uh, like I have no doubt, some of the boys would have learned far more from Saturday night than what they would have done the two weeks previous because we did get time and space. We get open areas of the field to run into or we're on challenge, we're tracked against Dublin and Tyrone. The other day, like I said, Monaghan from start to finish um, had hands on, had put pressure on us all the time. But you learn so much from, from a different variation of a game and a night like that there. And I think it, it can only be good, um, particularly for boys who are sort of new and inexperienced to the group and had been brilliant for the two weeks previous. I don't think it's a case of all oh, we've been found out now and we're not as good as what we are. Um, I just think we had to learn a few more lessons and we did the other night and I think the boys will definitely be much better for it. But like I said, the step up in class is coming now uh, with Mayo and with Dublin or with Kerry in particular um, over the next couple of weeks. Um, but isn't it brilliant uh, for both players and supporters alike that uh, we're all getting this opportunity, them to play and us to be to be following them. Certainly, is. it's one to look forward to and we'll be back, of course, on Thursday to preview that game and a couple of other games coming up this weekend. The Camogues are hopefully getting their league campaign up and running. The ladies in their refixtures on Sunday and on the 20s also are getting their league campaign started as well. Um, so as I say, we'll be back on Thursday to preview all them games. And Aaron, thanks once again for coming on and hopefully we'll get another win this weekend. Cheers, Sean. No problem.